Well, glory to God, sinners and saints, how's everybody doing on this beautiful day? Welcome to Fat Farm Day 24. And on this video, we're going to talk about a geographical cure. We're going to talk about generational curses. We're going to talk about maybe you're not even a Christian, but you think you are. What do you mean? I got my faith in Jesus. Do you really have your faith in Jesus? Let's go into the Word of God today. We're going to look at Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, and if you've never watched a Fat Farm video, it's an online revival, I'm doing 365 videos this year in 2023, and it's not just for weight loss, you know, if you fix what's broken on the inside of you, and you quit trying to make a geographical cure, like I'm going to change a job, I'm going to change a boyfriend, a girlfriend, I'm going to change a spouse, if you truly get rooted into the Word of God, you're going to find out real quick it's easy to put the spoon down. It's easy to put the heroin needle down. It's easy to not be angry anymore. When you get a revelation of God, one of the things that I've seen in the modern American churches that's missing is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm an old school Holy Ghost filled preacher, and I have no problem proclaiming the gospel. Amen. And right here, this is the gospel, and this is straight truth. In Romans 1 and 1, it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter. What you think is irrelevant when it comes to the Bible. If you do not believe in the holy word of God, that Jesus Christ died on the cross, raised, was resurrected out of that tomb, if you don't believe he's on the right hand of the Father right now preparing a mansion, if you don't believe there's a Holy Ghost, if you don't believe that we should be following the teachings of the Apostle Paul, which I'm just reading to you right here, then you got a big problem. And folks, this may be a little serious video today, but I'm seriously dealing because as a preacher, I stand right there at the gate between heaven and hell to tell you that I follow the Bible, you need to follow Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, apostle separated unto the gospel of God. If we're going to follow the gospel, we need to read in verse 2, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. What we have today is a lot of people aren't even qualified to be in the churches. A lot of people aren't even qualified to be Christians. Because if you flip over to Roman 8 and 1, you see a lot of people say this. There is there now no condemnation to them which is in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation. There's no judgment. Well, honey, I'm going to tell you something. This word is judgment. I'm going to tell you something. Once in grace, not always in grace. So, wherever you go, there you are. If you're a follower of Christ and you're sitting drunk in a football stadium, you're not a follower of Christ. Because... You are under condemnation if you read the rest of the scripture. And that's what we don't understand. That's why I see a lot of people that I pastorally counsel. They are always making a, a geographical cure because they don't understand scripture. Number one, they either don't understand it. Or number two, they don't want to live up to the commandments of God. They don't want to do what's required. Now, years ago, I didn't want to do what was required. I didn't want to give up my drinking. I didn't want to give up my sin. Like someone I talked to yesterday, he said, I went to a church. I grew up in a church. But then all of a sudden, they got. I was tired of being judged because I wanted to go out and live like I wanted to live. So I left the church. And that's the whole problem right there. When that gentleman left that church, you hear me right now, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you walk away from a church that's preaching the gospel and you walk away because you want to go live like the heathen, and you got it in your mind because of false teachers today telling you there's no condemnation to them or in Christ Jesus, you're living a lie in a condemnation. You're, you've, you brought condemned, you've, you've condemned yourself to hell. Folks, hell's still real. Hell still burns. And hell is still real. And see, what happens is, People want to get Facebook likes. They want to get shares. People want to go on the YouTube and attract the attention. I'm not that preacher. I'm here to preach. If two people watch this video, whatever. If two people come, and I've had people run out of the back of my church, and that's fine. 
run out there. I love you anyways, and I will still be here preaching the gospel when you decide to stop living like the heathen under the false notion that there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Go back over to Romans, because we're going to connect these two things together. You have to understand that Paul suffered. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was snake-bitten. Paul was also a murderer. He was somebody that was a very bad person that had to transform on the road to Damascus when Jesus came and had an encounter with Paul. Why dost thou persecute me? And he used Paul a murderer for me. So I, as a Holy Ghost-filled preacher, man of God, and you, as someone that's a self-proclaimed Christian, you should be preaching, teaching, and acting the same thing that I'm preaching out of the book of Romans this morning. This was not just to the Romans, because it says here, in verse 5, by whom we have received grace and apostleship and obedience to the faith among all nations in his name. If you are not obedience to the, in obedience to the faith of Jesus Christ, you're under condemnation. And you're not even saved. Because here's how this really works, folks. Go back to Romans 8. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. There's a second part. So, if you're not happy in your job here, you're not happy in your marriage here, you're not happy in your church here, it doesn't matter, the marriage, the church, the job, whatever it is. If you're walking and you're condemned to the pit of hell because you're the one that wants to live unto the old desires of your flesh, but you'll claim Christianity but you won't really believe in Jesus. You're claiming the name only because this scripture says here, you have to walk after the Spirit. So there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ, Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So that means, back over to Romans See how these scriptures, every scripture in the Bible goes together. The blood is seen all the way through the Bible. But people don't want to see the blood because they want to see that stupid Super Bowl. People don't want to see the blood because they want to see the lust and desires of their own flesh. People don't want to see the blood of Jesus Christ because they want to see how much money is going to go into their wallet. That's why we have an internet world full of people. Even Christians participating in internet schemes to make money. And it's, what, it's the truth. Back over here, it says, and declared to be the Son of God in verse 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Then that goes back into that verse 5 I read a few minutes ago. By whom we have received grace and apostleship and obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. So when you come to a church looking for a band-aid for your boo-boo, and that preacher doesn't entertain you. That preacher doesn't put on a light show. That preacher doesn't get your kids up to sing. Too bad, honey. Sit down with your Jezebel spirit and start learning something in Scripture. See, that's what I had to take unto myself years ago when I was a babe in Christ, was I had to come to the revelation of the Scripture in order to preach under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Because that comes into verse 6. Among whom are ye also called of Jesus Christ? You've got to be called by the drawing of the Holy Ghost. And when you're drew or drawn by the Holy Ghost, you'll realize that you can no longer walk in the flesh. You've got to walk in the Spirit. That means some firm decisions have to be made in our lives. Otherwise, we will continue to make a geographical cure because we're going to be miserable on the inside. Of course, you're going to be miserable if you're walking and you're condemned because... If you drop down to verse 5, Romans 8 and 5, it says, For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See, one thing I've learned in ministry is more Scripture, less me. I can sit here and pontificate everything that I'm against. I can't stand Christians going to Super Bowl parties. I can't stand Christians having Super Bowl parties in their church because I think... I think to myself, would Moses or Aaron walk into the temple wearing a pair of sneakers watching the godless heathen bowl next to the mercy seat? 
things that are holy. So the reason why a lot of you today are suffering is because you're not living a life of holiness dedicated unto God. You're living a life for yourself because it says right here in verse 6 again, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, which means it's an enemy of God. It is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. So, the problem is today, we don't want to be under judgment. We don't want to be under condemnation. We don't want to be under the law of God. Because we want flesh. We want me. We want my satisfaction. My life. My aspirations. My goals. My wants. My needs. And that, what's it, that brings you right to Romans. And all this goes into Scripture, folks. I'm not just running off the cuff here this morning. This is the Holy Ghost message to tell. And this is the same thing I tell them down there at the church. Because there's only going to be a remnant, folks. There's only a remnant of believers. There's only going to be a remnant getting into heaven. There's only a remnant right now that are really experiencing Holy Ghost-filled revival. And those of us that truly believe the Word of God. Because in Romans... Back to that first chapter in the 21st verse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. And you know, my fat farmers, let me tell you what. Why don't you read the book of Romans? In, be, in between all the other, you, you know, godless heathen stuff you may be participating in. I told you when we started this thing, I, I'm a hard-nosed preacher. Look, at, look, Romans is only that much right there in the Bible. Just a few pages. You can read that. In, be, in, be, in between scratching off lottery tickets and gossiping about your church members and stabbing them in the back, you could actually read that much Romans. Folks, I ain't, I ain't playing this week. I ain't playing with these little devils, these little Jezebels, and these little once saved, always saved, always in faith, all this and that, and mumbo jumbo in the church. You're either in the faith or you're out of the faith. And I'm not going to change and put on a pair of tennis shoes and prance around the stage like some woman. Well, God loves you. God loves you. Oh, he loves you so much. No, well, God does love you. But there's a lot of men, and I, I'm going to talk to men right now in this video. Because I'm, I hold men to a higher standard because unlike these cultural preachers that want to bow down to the Jezebel women, I speak the truth. Some of you men are acting like a bunch of women in your house. That's why you hide in the garage, you hide in the church, you hide at the bar, you hide at your girlfriend's house. And you don't go in there and take authority because you don't believe this. But you'll go sit in church. I'm speaking to somebody on this Fat Farm video today. You'll go sit in church. You'll put your little Sunday shoes on. You'll act Christian. You'll talk Christian. But you'll go back to that house and you'll fire up that internet and be the biggest sinner that there's ever is on the planet. And you're dying because you've got a carnal mind. And us Holy Ghost filled preachers know how to call that out. And we know how to bring conviction on it. And we know how to walk into a church. And call out those demon spirits. And not care what this world thinks. And I'm telling folks. There's a way. This backslidden good for nothing. Devil worship in church world. Having Super Bowl parties in their houses do it. Or in their houses of God. There's one way those tennis shoe sneaker preachers do it. But then there's a way that God does it. And it's the way I'm preaching it right now. That God is dealing with the hearts of many people. God is dealing with churches. God is dealing with power and authority in many man's life. And God is dealing with people that don't want to hear it. But I'm telling it to you right now. There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. There's a Bible to read and there's kids to be a good example to. So the generational curse that I'm talking about, you can continue on in that generational curse of alcoholism, drug abuse, Continue on that generational curse of abusing your children, abusing your wife, beating the snot out of her. I'm calling every bit of this out today. You can keep on verbally abusing your spouse. 
You Jezebel women can keep on abusing your husband because you can't do anything about the anger inside of you. But on the inside, I'm going to tell you, the devil has planted a seed of anger in you. That's why you become a Jezebel. Because deep down on the inside, people don't want to be Jezebels. They don't want to be sinners. They don't want to be addicted. But the one thing that's going to break that generational curse is for you to grow up and put, up, put on your big boy and girl pants and realize that it's a seed of the devil that was planted in you years ago by your parents. Your parents probably learned it from their parents who learned it from their parents. And the churches, they learn false doctrine from their great grandpappy's false religion. And then they go to seminary school and that false religion continues to be perpetuated generation after generation generation after generation that produces a social media and church world that believes in once saved, always saved, that the grace of God is so cheap, you can still have a Super Bowl party in the church. The grace of God is so cheap, you can still go out and drink beer and go preach Sunday morning in the internet pulpit that you have. It's so cheap that you can abuse your wife and you can sin like the heathen, but go to church on Sunday morning. That's not the Bible that I'm reading. That's not the life that I live. And that's not the church I'm building down the street here. When we get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and we get people talking in tongues and prophesying and running around the church again, get some holy rollers down there on the floor, get some people willing to pray more than three seconds. Amen. Get some Christians burning some football jerseys and, and talking more about Jesus than this stupid who day stuff. I hope the Bengals lose every single game they ever play because it'll probably get more people into heaven. Follow the sneaker preachers, folks. Have a good time. Don't read your Bible. Have a good time. Do all the geographical cures you want. Have a good time. Run by the liquor store after church Sunday. Have a good time. But judgment is coming. There's going to come a great notable day where the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And they're going to be judged where Jesus is going to separate the sheep from the goats. And if you get caught up in the cares and the misery of this life and you don't get to work for tearing for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, truly be born again and realize there is condemnation to those that still live in the carnality of their minds. There's still condemnation to those that want to live and love the world more than Jesus Christ because Jesus said you have to pick up your cross daily and follow me if you want to be my disciples and the human nature is to drop the cross drop who we are and backslide all the way to hell because Jesus said in the book of Revelations in that third chapter that he that overcometh I will give to him that crown of glory that's the true gospel message and that won't keep many tithe payers in our bounce house churches. Because I'm going to tell some people today, honey, if you're going to these lukewarm, backslidden churches that are more worried about pizza parties and giving your kids a bounce house party than they are. Most of these kids that I see walking around in all my years of counseling and traveling, they know more about the pizza that's being served in the group group party than they know about the Apostle Paul or basic tenets of salvation. And most Christians are the same way because it's a generational curse it's a generational curse bought into our churches by jezebel women that hold the purse strings that hold their preacher men down i'm telling you when we start sitting down more jezebels in the church and start sitting down more of these women that are destroying the church bringing the joyce myers doctrines in and the old joel osteen backslidden good for nothing devil worshiping sermons in and we throw out all the false prophet books and we start burning the books that are contradicting the word of God and tell people there is condemnation. There is judgment. But Jesus died on the cross so you can be saved. And that's the other side, folks. I'm not just preaching my opinion and what I'm thinking because it's all rooted in Scripture that when Jesus dealt and he knelt in that garden of Gethsemane and he cried and that sweat became like blood and he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. He cried those tears so you can have a Super Bowl party. He cried those tears so you can get drunk after church. He cried those tears so you can live today by only the power of the Holy Ghost holding back the evil so you can still make a decision. That's why those tears were shed. 
because those tears are still in the ground on this earth crying for you to get saved. That is the other side of the gospel. Is the Holy Ghost filled preachers are pleading to a lost and dying world that loves sports more than they love the church. That loves their generational curses because they refuse to get down and break themselves on an altar of fasting and prayer. And say I'm possessed by a devil and there's a devil in my house. And when we get the devils out of the house and we stop this mumbo jumbo of we're all just going to get into heaven. Not everybody's going to heaven. Like I told the two little false prophets that came in my neighborhood a few weeks ago. Drove from this old church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints down the road. And believe it in the false prophet there, John Smith, that they're going to get a planet and have to wear some magic underwear. If we don't rebuke the false prophets in our neighborhood. And I told them two young men who could not defend their own church because they couldn't answer the basic questions. They didn't even know their own theology, but they're coming at me trying to get me to wear some magic underwear. I said, get out of my neighborhood, you two little false prophets, and don't burn in hell for what you believe. Boy, you don't see preaching like that no more. It's very rare. You don't see that on social media. That ain't going to get a lot of followers now, is it? It don't matter to me, folks. There was a point that all of Jesus' disciples walked away from him. And who do we think we are today? Who do I think I am if I don't stay in the faith, if I don't stay fasting, if I don't stay praying, if I don't stay doing what the Lord's called me to do, if I'm not faithful to that pulpit? If I walk into my pulpit on Sunday morning and I got sin in my heart and I've been living all week like the heathen, what do I think I'm going to do to cast out a devil or get anybody free? What do I think that I'm going to receive a message from God? What do I think I'm going to be able to sit here if I'm not living the faith and preach to anybody else? But there's a lot of foolish preachers that think they will, wearing their little sneakers, having their little Super Bowl parties, making the whole world worship themselves inside of their little churches. It's because they're not reading the book of Romans and they're not preaching the judgment because the judgment will not build a big church. And that's what we got. I preach to people that want it, that receive it. I preach to the people that have gotten free from their generational curses. I preach to those that actually want a revelation of Scripture. I preach because when I start preaching, I let the Lord speak. And I'm unashamed. And I don't care because I am preaching to an end-time church that is fixing to go through a tribulation period because they're going to miss the rapture. They're going to miss the calling of Jesus because it needs to be preached. So back to Romans 8, folks. Romans 8 and 9, it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, if, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, He's not going to dwell in you in the bar. He's not going to dwell in you laying out at the, at the crack house. Because if you do that, you haven't made a decision to be born again and you have no evidence of the fruits of the Spirit. When you get saved and you're truly saved, you're going to put it down. You're going to be done with a lot of things in your life. Because the power of the Holy Ghost is going to enter that body and you're going to withdraw from that sin. Verse 10, it says, If in Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit of life is because of righteousness, the righteousness of what Christ did. But if the spirit of him that raiseth up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raiseth up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells in you. So these backslidden preachers, these liars in these seminary schools, lie to the people, if you are truly saved and you've got that spirit and you're born again, Christ will quicken your mortal bodies. That means you'll turn away from the world. That means you'll turn to Christ Jesus. You'll honor the sacrifice. And things inside of you will change very quickly. That's the Bible. Now to the other half of the lukewarm Christians or people that don't even want to make a decision to live the Bible, they're just going to a church every Sunday to fulfill a requirement. So, why do kids, and I interview them all the time, Adults that went to church, they grew up in church. Generally, it's because they never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, because once you feel that fire, 
It's going to be really hard to walk away and backslide. Number two, they didn't believe the preacher because the preacher didn't really make a bond with them because they saw the filthy lucre. They saw the greed of the preacher and they walked away from the church because they didn't believe the church. They didn't believe in anything of it. But I'm telling anybody right now in this video, if you've walked away from the church, come on down to my church, honey. I love you because there's a many people that want to hear this, the truth. And I'll hit you with a 10-pound hammer and get you down to the altar crying and praying. Because that is the entrance way to God. Because you've got to come to Him like a humble child. And you've got to cry out before God and say, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. When Isaiah looked up and he realized, I am a man of unclean lips. I am the sinner. And he saw God. And he saw the train fill the temple and God is high and lifted up. You can only repent for your sin and truly turn away from this world when you have a revelation of Christ, of him being high and lifted up. Until we get over our arrogance and our ego and our love for this world, you'll never be born again. Ever. And your name will not be written in that book of life. And that is the reality that I preached under. That is the reality that I came to many years ago when I came out of that backslidden condition and I quit drinking. I threw away all that tobacco and I threw away all that sin and lust. Threw it all away because I knew without holiness I wasn't going to see God. So you little fat farmers, you're going to have to take this to your heart. Because this is what we get on the, on the fat farm. This is what we're going to get to get us to heaven because I don't want anybody to perish. And like I always said, there ain't going to be no blood on my hands. Ain't going to be no blood on my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this morning. Spirit of the living God, touch the sinners. Lord, touch these Christians that are lukewarm. Touch these backsliders, God. Let them know you love them, but let them know this decision time. There's a decision to be made in this glorious day that you've created. There's a decision to be made when the book of prophecy is being closed according to the book of Revelations, but you're still holding it open for us. God, I pray that you touch your people this morning. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray marriages will be restored. I pray the sick will be healed. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Ghost will start dealing with the hearts of many people. Lord, let that revival spirit, Lord, just pour out upon the land. Let preachers out there today that watch this video that know they've been called to preach, but they've been fooled by a seminary or a denomination. Let them come out of those yokes of bondage. Let them go ahead and open up that mouth and let the Holy Ghost speak in the name of Jesus. Let house churches be delivered. Let house churches be started. Let the full-blown condemnation, let the judgment of God enter into a many of churches to bring people under repentance repentance through that Holy Ghost conviction, Lord. Lord, I've obeyed you today. I've obeyed that word, and I'm faithful to that word, God, because I know that I will not sleep if I can't, Lord, just obey what you've called me to do. Lord, I praise you, Jesus. I thank you for saving this wretched man and transferring me, Lord, and giving me that newness and that spirit, God. And I thank you for these people and these few listeners, God, that I get to preach to and help them and encourage them. Lord Jesus, I pray, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, get it out of these people. Let them turn away from that sin and turn to your eternal kingdom, and I praise you, Jesus. Amen. I love you all out there today. Praise God. I look forward to coming to you again tomorrow.